Hey guys, becoming good at something takes practice and self-doubt is pretty normal. But you can cure that by following this tutorial and learn something new in the road to become a better content creator. And oh boy, do we got something cool in store for you. By the way, you can get all our project files on our Patreon, including the old ones, while supporting us in the process. Plus, it comes with a bunch of extras and oh yeah, you can use everything for commercial and personal use. Go check it out. But okay, let's focus on After Effects. We create a new composition by hitting this icon right here in the project panel. In the new pop-up window, I can give my new composition a name, set the resolution and the frame rate. I can also determine how long the comp needs to be. Of course, all these settings are personal and depend on your own project. First things first, I create a simple solid layer as a background. On this solid, I add a gradient ramp. Now I like to keep it dark, so for my gradient colors, I choose black and dark gray. Only problem here is that you get this banding, which is pretty ugly. An easy fix is to add the noise effect to the solid layer and set it to like 2%. And boom, the banding is gone and we have a background layer. Next, let's create some cool stuff. Before anything, make sure your background layer isn't selected because we are going to create shapes. And this won't work if any layers are still selected. So in the toolbar on top, let's look for the rectangle tool and hold it down. This will give me a drop down menu and now I can choose the star tool. And no, don't worry, I'm not not gonna create star shapes. If you have the tool selected and use the up and down arrow keys, you can add and subtract corners. And I'm just going to do that to create a triangle. That was easy. And again, deselect all layers and let's create a circle. With the circle shape tool, of course. Now one last time, take the rectangle tool and create a perfect square. And those are the shapes I'm going to work with. Now I do have a problem. I want to animate the paths of the shapes. However, they don't have an option to do that. And here's the fix. If I open up the properties of the shape layers, then open open up the content drop down, you get a property with the name of the shape and pen behind it, like rectangle pad. On this property, I'm going to right click and choose convert to brazier pad. And voila, now I have the option to animate the pad for all three layers. So I instantly create a keyframe for all three, but I'm not keeping all three layers. Let's select the keyframe on the circle shape layer and paste it to the triangle pad property. Now do exactly the same for the square. Copy the square keyframe and paste it again to the triangle pad. After that, we can delete the circle and and the square layer, leaving us with the triangle layer with the keyframes on the path property. And let's now see what these keyframes do. I scrub through my timeline and can now see that my shape's morphing into each other. Already cool, but I'm going to fine tune the keyframes. To start, press the shortcut Shift P to open up the position property. Normally, it's just P, but because I already have the path property open, I need to use the Shift key to add properties. Knowing this, also press Shift R for the rotation. Now let's create keyframes for that position and rotation property. And of course, place a triangle wherever we want. Here on the right, for instance. Next, I want my triangle to move to the left while rotating. So I go further in time and move my triangle to the left. In the timeline, I also adjust the rotation properties to minus 300 degrees. Then let's select the two keyframes on the pad where the triangle morphs into the circle. I'm placing these between my position keyframes, leaving me with this. However, I want to make it more dynamic, so I'm going to add one more keyframe for the position and rotation. Just behind my first keyframe, I'm going to move the triangle triangle a little bit to the right and make it rotate towards the side. This little movement makes it look like it's loading up for a big move. Now of course I'm easing all my keyframes. The begin keyframes I give an ease out, the middle ones I give an easy ease, and the last keyframes I'm going to go with ease in, because my animation is not finished yet. Now if you want to learn everything you need to know about keyframing, check out the video here on the top. Let's continue animating. The next keyframes will again be an overshoot, meaning I'll animate my circle a little bit to the left. Then I go further in time and move my circle all the way to the right, back to the begin position and also rotate it back to zero. Now for the pad property, I create a duplicate of the circle keyframe and place it together with the square keyframe in between the new position animation. Again, I give my keyframe the correct easing. For my last keyframes, I again do an overshoot with a slight rotation towards that side. Then I animate my position so my shape ends somewhere past the middle of the screen. Of course, I also animate the rotation again and to add some flavor, I created a scale animation, making my shape a little smaller. Oh yeah, don't forget the path property. Here I again create a duplicate of the square keyframe and drag in between my last position animation. However, I want to end as a triangle, so I also copy and paste that keyframe towards the end. This leaves me with a shape that moves to the left and morphs into a circle, moves back to the right and then morphs into a square, and last moves to the center and goes back to a triangle. But hold on, we're not finished yet. I moved my shape to the center because I want to use the triangle in a word. So let's take the pen tool and type after
After Effects, for instance, but then without the letter A. With the Align tool, I center my word. With this new object in my scene, I can now finalize the position and scale of my shape, so it fits perfectly with my text, leaving me with this animation. Not quite yet finished, as you can see. For instance, I want my text to be revealed when the shape flies over it, so on the end position of my animations, I'm going to create a new shape layer. This will be a very rough rectangle shape that covers my text completely, and this shape will serve as a mat for the text. So let's go to the text layer in the timeline, and here I look for the track mat pick whip tool. That's this spiral looking icon right here. I click and drag this to my new mat layer, and boom, nothing happens. This is because the track mat effect will show everything inside the mat shape, and that shape is covering the text, so the text is visible, obvious. What we need to do is open up the position property of the mat shape and parent that to the position of the triangle shape. Now I'm only linking the position property and not the entire layer because the triangle shape also has a rotation animation and I don't want my mat shape to mimic the rotation, only follow the position. And a little pointer here, if your shape isn't in the right spot anymore due to the linking, just use the anchor point property of the mat layer to adjust it. And voila, we have a text reveal. Now there's only one simple thing to do, but it makes this entire animation so much better. I'm gonna add the colored motion blur. For this, I'm taking my original shape animation layer and creating a duplicate from it by pressing Ctrl D or Command T. On the bottom animation layer, I'm adding the echo effect. What does it do? Well, create echoes or delayed copies of the animation. For the settings, I'm gonna increase the echo time and increase the number of echoes and also lower the decay, which leaves me with this. Now, the only thing left to do is add the tint effect where I adjust the color to something that I want. And this color is also animated to change between every shape change. And voila, our cool effect is done. Now, if you want some more beginner tips on how to do motion graphics, click the video right here in the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.